morning, everyone. Uh, as mentioned, I present the Eurocase project. You see some details here. It was in the robotic use case funding program, which uh, for me, with my uh, applied-oriented research, uh, is really a great tool. I hope there will be more of this. Uh, you see the budget, you see the duration, and the consortium. Uh, consortium leader was uh, Kauel in Leuven. Uh, basically, it was Manu van der Borten, uh, who sends his best greetings, but at the moment he has, at the very moment, he has his uh, annual conference SRAS in Genoa. Uh, what you also can see in this list is we had a very nice uh, combination of research partners, of company partners, and of clinical partners, uh, which, of course, uh, is very appropriate for this use case scenario. As it is about success stories, so what do you think, what makes a medical robot do a success? And one answer is, if the robot opens ways of treatment which could not be done without the robot. And that was exactly the motivation behind your eye case. Uh, as application examples, we took uh, two very challenging, very demanding procedures from uh, surgery on the retina, on the human retina. Uh, we started with a procedure which is uh, called membrane peeling, which is something which can be done manually, uh, so no doubt about that, but it's already challenging. But so to say, the highlight of, of our application was uh, treatment of retinal vein occlusions, where the treatment is that you inject an agent to the small vessels in the retina, and of course you don't want to miss those vessels. So if you see the challenges for peeling, it's, as mentioned, it is something which is doable, but there are already some, some uh, problems, uh, some complications which could be done, uh, which could be observed in, in a manual procedure. Mostly you have a retinal tear, so that means people are going too deep, for example, with the instrument, which then cause a bleeding on the retina, and of course this is not really something you would like to have as a patient. Uh, but for the cannulation, for the treatment of the RVO, you see there is a lot of, 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 of very... Uh, nice challenges for research, and that is the reason why this procedure basically cannot be done without a robot in this particular uh, setup. That means uh, injection, very targeted injection of the agent is something which cannot be done without the help of a robot. You see there is a big, biggest problem here is the human tremor, because the tremor is already uh, much bigger than the size of the vessel, which is about, as you can see here, uh, 10 to five, uh, 400 microns, so that's really challenging to hit the vessel and not to go too deep with your, uh, with your agent. So this is the setup. You see here it's much more than only, well only, uh, talking about robots. So we had a complete uh, operating suite uh, with a lot of imaging, with a lot of communication, with a lot of uh, also uh, software uh, in order to guide the surgeon through that procedure. Uh, OCT is one of the one of the most interesting uh, components so to say in the setup here. Uh, but as it is about robotic, the session at least, I also want to highlight the two robots we have used. Uh, it was also one target of the project to investigate if these certain proce procedures are better uh, better suited for for telemanipulation robot system, which came in the project from the uh, colleagues in Leuven, or if it is uh, uh, sorry telemanipulation, which came from the uh, colleagues from Precise in Eindhoven, or co-manipulation, uh, which uh, where the robot came from, from Leuven. As mentioned, it was a use case, so the idea basically was to start already with kind of a higher TRL, um, and then really bring some of the, of the components to almost, uh, let's say, product state. Uh, you see it in this slide, the uh, exploitation targets which have then isolated at the end of the project. There are already some, and if you see the TRA levels, it's, it's already kind of, of high. Um, there was still one lesson learned, if you want, for the use case. Uh, we had uh, still research uh, partners in the consortium, and it was, to some extent, it was very complicated to really stop them or to tell them, okay, it's now enough with research, we have to do the translation, so maybe uh, this should be considered if you go for a use case, that it should be clear from the very beginning that research, basic research, is not in the main target of that of the project. How did we deal with that situation? Uh, we decided about half time in the project that we split into two setups. We had then one more research-oriented setup, um, 
which was around the co-manipulation robot, and we had one setup which really tried to go to the very uh, highest level of TRL, which was with the uh, telemanipulation robot. And especially for the second uh, setup, I'm, I'm proud to say that we already could manage uh, patient trials in the framework of the project. You see here some images. I'm sorry that surgeons cannot be here, but they are very excited because, as mentioned at the beginning of my presentation, they really have po uh, possibilities now with the robot which they could not even imagine before we start with the project. So it was very uh, surprising and very uh, beneficial, I think, also for, for those, uh, uh, for the clinical partners. I think it was also a good experience for the involved company partners, especially for Precise. Uh, and this is also another success aspect of this project. Uh, they are still working on, on, on certification, but it's close to, to, to a robot is close uh, to certification. Still part of the consortium is working together on that, even if the project is now uh, already stopped a year ago. So we recently did a big usability trial, for example, for, for the uh, colleagues in Precise. And I think that system will be very successful on the, on the market. And I would say this is then exactly what funding at the end should help to do. So thank you very much. Uh, sorry that I could not go into more detail for technical uh, uh, results, but 10 minutes are rather short. So thank you. Thank you so much. Very interesting. And, <laughs> and maybe in a few years we call back again and ask where the product is now. Huh? Good, thank you. It's good to see that the people are continuing and going towards certification. Uh